And then when you look at art, uh, the theme of beauty is, is decisive uh, for a conversation on art. And perceiving all that he has created as good, as we heard from our passage from uh, Genesis, God saw that it was beautiful as well. And in a certain sense, beauty in the physical form of the good is in the physical form of the good, just as the good uh, is part of a condition of beauty. And so there's that connection. Remember we talked about that the first week, the connection of truth, goodness to beauty and how they're all interrelated. And so the Pope just reaffirms that in his letter. And so beauty uh, is really the vocation of the artist given to that artist by the creator uh, in the gift of artistic talent. So in other words, we've all been given gifts from God. We've all been given things that make us who we are. And for the artist, part of that gift that God has given them uh, is the vocation, if you will, uh, of being an artist. Uh, and so recognizing that gift, that talent, like any of the gifts that God gives us, we're called to go out and to share that gift. You know, remember the gospel passage about you don't hide your talents under a bushel basket or you don't hide your light under a bushel basket. And so uh, you're called to go out and to let that light shine. And so like any of the gifts that God gives us, the same is true of the artist. And so the artist has that vocation of sharing his gift uh, in the form of artistic talent. So having said that, I'm going to quote directly from the Pope on this. He says, Artists who are conscious of all of this know, too, that they must labor without allowing themselves to be driven by the search for the empty glory or the craving for cheap popularity, and still less by the calculation of some possible profit for themselves. There is, therefore, an ethic, even a spirituality of artistic service, which contributes in its way to the life and renewal of people. Now, I don't know if you recognize that, I'm not even going to call it art. Um, but that came from uh, it, right after, if you remember, Mayor Washington was the first African-American mayor in the history of the city of Chicago. Uh, and he had passed away uh, very suddenly from a heart attack. And within a few months after he had passed away, a student at the Art Institute uh, displayed that. Uh, and so um, I, I suspect to garner attention. Uh, and so, uh, as you can imagine, the people who are closest to the late mayor were none too happy uh, that that was displayed in the Art Institute. Yes? Did you know? Did they get a? Re did you get a reply? Okay. So Marianne was saying she wrote a letter to the Art Institute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't want to linger on that because it's hideous. But as, as I was thinking about this passage from the letter, I was trying to think of the most hideous thing I could think of, and that's the first thing that popped in my head. Father Matt? Thank you. <laughs> because his, his muffin top is hanging out over his belly button. So let's move away from that. I just wanted to... Oh, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about that next week. Um, but yes, that is a very valid question. So what is the beauty in modern art? Uh, and so you have to, again, we're gonna, next week what we're going to do, part of what we're going to do next week, is we're going to take pieces of art, or hopefully mostly, I think we're going to do mostly art, um, take pieces of art, and we're going to, all of us are going to evaluate them based on our experiences from the previous four classes. So what principles of objective beauty uh, can we apply to a piece of art? And it's not just going to be paintings, because there's all sorts of art. Uh, and so we'll, we'll try to apply the principles that we've learned, including modern art, uh, to our examples here to see if they are, in fact, beautiful. So for everyone, believers or not, the works of art inspired by scripture remain a, relev or remain a reflection of the unfathomable mystery which engulfs and inhabits the world. And so that's such an important part of, of art and beauty in terms of the Holy Father, because when you think about our faith, one thing that is almost unique about our faith compared to the rest of the world in this day and age is mystery. We have very little mystery left in the world today other than our faith. Uh, and so art 
uh, should be inspired to the degree that it, it tries to somehow image the mystery of our faith. Uh, and so a lot of religious art tr attempts to do that. Uh, and so that's an important quality of it. Um, and he also talks about every genuine art form is a wholly valid approach to the realm of faith. And so again, when you start to connect to that mystery, you end up naturally moving to faith because faith and mystery go together. They go hand in hand. Now that's a bowl that Saul and Fuso made for me, or made for the green and gold auction that Father Matt was kind enough uh, to purchase for me in the auction. Uh, and so it's a beautiful piece of work uh, that he made from scratch. Uh, and so when you look at certain pieces of art, uh, they do kind of begin to connect you uh, to, the, to the realm of faith and to mystery. Uh, and so that's a beautiful thing. That is the seminary at Mundelein before they, re before they renovated it. Um, when did they renovate it, Father Matt? Yeah. That was uh, Father Barron's last year. So, so just five, a, years five years ago. Yeah, yeah, the only thing that's changed is the, uh, the high altar is back. Okay. But, um, but that's the chapel at the seminary in Mundelein. And so art is, um, as I said, by its nature, an appeal to the mystery in life. Uh, and so those things that we can't describe adequately, art can in fact describe or help our encounter with. Uh, and so there's all sorts of examples of that, uh, but it is something that's very, very um, beautiful, I think. Uh, and that's a Monet garden piece. And so uh, the world in which we live then needs beauty in order not to sink into despair. And so if we didn't have art, uh, that's Luciano Pavarotti, by the way, um, the great tenor. And so if we didn't have beauty in the world, uh, we would lose our sense of hope. And when there isn't hope, uh, you tend to sink into despair. Uh, and that's an unfortunate thing. But that tells you how much uh, value there is to beauty and to art, uh, art done well, uh, because it, it does connect us uh, into that experience of hope. Uh, and if you listen to something that Luciano sings, I mean, it's, uh, Laura will connect with us in, on some of that stuff later. But, um, again, that's something that just helps us to reconnect with God and with our faith. And so uh, the church needs art. Uh, and so artists are always in search of the mystery of things uh, and to succeed in expressing the world of the ineffable. Uh, in other words, that which is too great to be expressed uh, by words. Uh, and so, again, there's that, that significant um, responsibility uh, that an artist has if they're doing their craft well. And in fact, uh, the church has always appealed to the artist's creative power in interpreting the gospel message. So it's a natural connection if we're going to continue with that discourse on mystery and faith, uh, that artists who connect the gospel uh, to life in the Christian community uh, are going to be very successful. Now this, this piece is right out of our missal uh, which is uh, right before the second Eucharistic prayer uh, when the priest prays. Uh, and so that's why it's a little wavy because I took it out of the book. Um, but this reminds me, when I was a kid, our church, Our Lady Help of Christians that we belonged to on the west side of Chicago, uh, had like a half dome above the sanctuary. Uh, and this, not exactly this, but similar to this, artistic rendering was uh, displayed in the, in the dome, the half dome of the church. And I remember as a, as a young kid sitting there looking at you know, God the Father extending his arms over the cross while his son is hanging on it and just being completely mesmerized by that. You know, I mean, that really, that spoke to me perhaps more than words could. You know, at that age particularly, when I was a little kid, you know. If I didn't understand the complexities of that dynamic of the Trinity, uh, seeing that represented in art uh, is something that really helped connect it for me. Uh, and so I always have a great deal. And if you notice the Holy Spirit, represented by the dove, is above the head of the Father. Uh, and so we see Father, Son, and Spirit represented in that beautiful piece of art uh, that helps connect us to our faith. And so, as I said, I mean, if we have a hard time imagining the relationship of Father, Son, and Spirit, uh, sometimes art can do something to help us with that uh, in a very powerful way. And, and so art um, helps us uh, to experience God uh, and creation 
um, through revelation. Uh, and so, uh, again, uh, just another thing that the Holy Father tells us in terms of that connection. Um, and so he talks about the relationship of the spirit. The divine breath of the creator spirit reaches out to human genius and stirs creative power. So someone who's a good artist, where does that come from? Well, it may come from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Uh, and so, again, that responsibility of artists uh, to, to ply their trade in such a way uh, that if, if they're able to connect um, with that creative power that's infused in them by the Holy Spirit, uh, then as they share it with us, that helps us to connect to the Holy Spirit as well. So that relationship is a very significant one. Uh, and so that's a little bit about what the Pope, the Holy Father talked about uh, in his letter to artists. It's a very short letter. I mean, it's not very long, uh, but it is quite beautiful uh, in its context. And it's, uh, it's very, very readable. And so I'd encourage you um, to get a hold of that copy. Uh, I, I think you can get it online, um, but um, it's just a, a beautiful relationship. Pardon me? Okay, so, okay, we'll put the link in the, um, in the what? With the resources. Oh, with the resources, okay, thank you. So, um, so that's a little bit about um, art. Are there any questions as we move forward? Does it make sense? Okay, good, good. Pardon me? Yes, that's the, uh, I happen to be privileged to be there. That's the Basilica de la Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. That church has been under construction for, I want to say, 100 years. Um, it's still under construction. So um, it's nearly done, uh, but it's, it's a beautiful church. Both, and the inside and the outside are completely different. Uh, and so as you go around the outside, as you tour the outside of the church, particularly at the ground level, it's basically a tableau of the life of Christ. And so... Um, it goes from his birth to his, his, his death and his resurrection uh, in various stages throughout the exterior of the church. And then the interior of the church is just full of different colored lights that come through on the stained glass windows uh, and a beautiful sanctuary as well. Uh, and so um, we're going to talk about church architecture uh, in a second here. Uh, and I'm going to introduce that to you um, because Dr. Dennis McNamara uh, taught at the seminary for many years. He was also, um, he worked on the Liturgical Institute at the seminary as well. Now he's teaching at Benedictine uh, University in, which, in Atchison, Kansas. Uh, he just got a new job there. Um, he's also been our consultant on the chapel project, which I'll talk about at the end, our adoration, perpetual adoration um, chapel project. Uh, so we're very gifted to have him um, help us with that and add his expertise. Uh, and so uh, we're going to look at a video um, on YouTube uh, of a talk that he gave in um, Colorado uh, last year. Uh, and so uh, he talks about architecture uh, as it relates to art. And so the name of the talk is Church Architecture as a Sacrament of Heaven. Uh, and so uh, let's see what time do we have. Okay. 